Yeah, when something's a myth or a fable, you know, when a lot of people um, just start believing it without even questioning it anymore, the validity of it all. That's when you can usually tell something's a myth or a fable. And well, we you know, not about myths and fables, we're going to talk about Idaho, you know, the land of potatoes and waterfalls and well, different types of mountains and things, you know, it's the rugged Idaho and well, it's one state actually that I don't have any experience in. I've never lived in Idaho and I don't think that, well, that, well, I don't have any way of knowing, but, well, I've heard some pretty bad things about Idaho, especially lately. And, well, this one really hurts me. Meaning, I wouldn't want to live in Idaho right now. It sounds like a horrible place to live. Well, anyway, there's a deal. SC1211. And, well, it was just recently signed into law by the governor of Idaho, who's a Republican, by the name of Brad Little. And, well, Brad Little signed the bill into law, which is, well, it's going to allow for hunting of wolves year-round, 11 to 12 months. And, well, you know, now you can actually hunt for wolves on, well, on private and public land. And, well, there's not too many restrictions anymore because the way the bill is written, the law states that, well, you can kill up to 90% of all the wolves in Idaho. And, well, public count, according to the Endangered Species List, states that there's about 1,500 wolves in Idaho, in total, the whole state. That's what they know of. There might be more, but that's what people have actually done the work to count and track. 1,500 wolves. And well, the governor's bright idea, the Republican governor in the Republican House and Senate, they advanced this legislation on a partisan, well, on a partisan note meaning that it didn't get any votes from the opposition party, the Democratic Party. So this is the Republican Party that owns this. You see, we're going to talk in one second about how dirty this is to the animals and how, well, if humans think they can fuck the animals, the animals will eventually fuck you. Anyway, they're going to kill 90% of the wolves in Idaho. There's 1,500, and well, if you kill 90% of the wolves, that leaves about 1,350 that you've killed. And so, well, do a little basic subtraction, and there will be 150 wolves left in the whole state out of the hole. Now, what these fucking clowns don't realize is, well, wolves protect their environment from other invasive species. And if you kill or murder all the wolves, or lots of them, to the point where they can't protect your their territory, other invasive species that are more harmful to humans will develop. And well, it'll come back to bite humans in the ass. And then they'll be like, we should have not killed all those wolves. But then it'll be too late. Because well, humans are reactionary creatures. They only always think after the fact not prior to. So, the knucklehead in Idaho, Brad Little, the Republican governor, you guys are gonna have to put pressure on that, that son of a bitch to reverse that. And if he doesn't reverse it, then kick his nasty fucking ass out because he's a wolf murderer. You know, maybe the son of a bitch never watched White Fang, you know? They had a white thing back in 1991. Oh, that was like decades ago now. And let me tell you clowns, well, and my viewers, the little kitties, that weren't around in 1991, what white thing was about. A myth and a fable. 
your fate or leave. Well, the first one was, well, from the creator, and it came out of the, well, the mind of Jack London. He created White Fang, and basically it's about a, a boy that grows up, and, well, they adventure out in the cold outdoors, and, well, he develops a bond with a wolf, a white wolf, and, well, in the second White Fang, which was horrible, it wasn't as good as the first one. You know, those sequels, never quite as good as the, well, the first, the original. Well, the sequel came out in 1994. And boy, was this with it, well, with all kinds of stereotypes and all kinds of fables and fallacies. Anyway, the second one was pretty much a young man and, well, an Indian tribe that believed in a white wolf coming back and returning to save his people. And well, they sent out their daughter, who happened to be an Indian girl, to retrieve the white wolf. And the white wolf was with, well, a young white male. And the Indians didn't like the, well, the white male and the wolf were together. And so, well, anyway, the white male and the wolf, the white wolf end up saving the Indian village. You know, the handsome white male, well, he's the, the hero again in the whole shebang. Nothing but whiteness, centering whiteness, white supremacy, you know, all the fun things that, well, I don't know if Walt Disney was rolling in his grave laughing or crying, but well, he was definitely doing one of one of those things. Anyway, maybe somebody needs to send Brad Little a copy of White Fang, you know, when white people, well, when they wanted to protect the wolf when they were friends with the wolf. Maybe, maybe Brad Little didn't see the movie back in 1991 or 1994. Or well, maybe it's a myth and a fable. You know, when you do the animals dirty, the animals eventually will do you something dirty. You ever heard of COVID-19? I heard a little story a while back that the CEO of Texas Roadhouse, well, he committed suicide because, well, he had COVID-19 symptoms, you know, the CEO of Texas Roadhouse, the, well, the individual that gave us all the big steaks and things like that and butchered a lot of cattle, you know, the first form of slavery on this planet was the enslavement of the animals, cattle slavery. And you know, that's your original sin as humans, to do the animals dirty like this. This is why the animals have done us dirty. And it's not gonna stop until we stop doing the animals dirty. You know, you gotta go beyond meat. Anyway, send Idaho Governor Brad Little, that son of a bitch, white thing. You know, it'll, well, it'll soothe a lot of things. It has a white male as a hero. And well, you know how white people feel about being the heroes and always centering themselves. Anyway, I hope and pray for the wolves that are in Idaho. I hope that they don't want to kill y'all, but, well, you know humans are sick, and, well, there's no stopping their depravity when they're sick.